Hey everybody, let's take a look at what we've got going on today. By the way, welcome to my garage here, uh, sitting out here trying to uh, make this video real quick while all the kids are asleep. Um, let's take a look at what you're going to do for today. So back on October the 26th, we talked about the First Amendment and we talked about how the freedom of speech and of the press and some other things, religion, assembly and uh, petition, <clears throat> How those um, how those rights were protected, uh, but also looked at how gray those were, how difficult they were to manage because there's so many different parts. Now I know that we just took a cursory look at those and just kind of touched on a lot of different pieces. Uh, today, ask you to really think about those kinds of things and to really explore how difficult those situations are. So the scenario was this: you've been nominated and accepted a seat on the Supreme Court. But as part of the approval process, <clears throat> you have to go in front of Congress and you've got to be grilled. And they're going to ask you, and they're asking you all these questions about these different cases in which, hey, how would you rule? So what we would like you to do is look at each of these situations, try to be very clear about how you interpret that situation, and then what would you do? How would you rule what side do you stand on? Do you think that's a violation of the First Amendment or not? Now, there are actual answers, but those answers are really dependent on how you interpret the situation. So, for instance, if you look at number one, Northeast High School places a nativity scene outside the front of the school to celebrate Christmas. This upset several Muslim students who stated that such a display violated their freedom of religion. What would the Supreme Court say about such a display? Is it appropriate or not? Why or why not? Now, I gave you the link, uh, the link to this case, Lynch versus Donnelly, which is a case that looked at something very similar to this. And these are some questions to be thinking about. Now, I don't expect you to answer all these questions individually. Uh, they are there to really get you thinking. But what would you do and why would you do it? Number two. Why is burning a draft card illegal, but burning an American flag legal? Um, and there's several cases here to kind of get you thinking about those, uh, that thing. This really gets to the sense of what is legal protest and what is not legal protest, what is symbolic and what is not symbolic. Um, and, and so um, I think that you will see this case, although it's draft card versus American flag, which we have seen in the United States, you know, this really gets to some other things, such as like sovereign citizens who, you know, they don't have any government documents. They won't produce any government documents or they refuse to take government documents. So the question is, what is the difference between symbolic speech and symbolism or, or not symbolic speech? Number three, Ms. Hilgis, while on a date, visited a popular London establishment called Christensen's. Much to her surprise, there was new dancing occurring. She was totally offended and disgusted by this tool, this public display of nudity. Miss Hilga sued the city of Lincoln for allowing this um, uh, a, a expressive display of nudity to occur on the grounds of being obscene to the moral standards of the city. And this gets to what was called the Miller test. My question to you is, does she have a right to be upset? Do you think this violates those kinds of expressive uh, speech? There is some explanation, some links to some cases to get you thinking. Number four, Chandler Fox, a senior at LNE, is editor-in-chief of the Northeastern. He writes an editorial for the paper each month, and for the latest issue, he wrote about the drug of choice at LNE. His supervising teacher refused to print the story due to drug references and its slanted view toward the positive side of drug use. Chandler was very upset with this decision and quoted his First Amendment right of freedom of speech and freedom of the press and sued the school. Does he have a case? And this goes back to the idea of Hazelwood, which we talked about. And finally, number five, Britney Spears has announced today that she's suing the paparazzi for the recent revealing photos taking of her while she was out with her new best friends, Paris Hilton and Lindsay Lohan. Yes, these are dated references, I know, but still. She states that the pictures were not of her not wearing any undergarments of her passed out in her friend's car is slander and ruining of image. The paparazzi stated that the pictures are covered under freedom of press and that she has no grounds for a lawsuit. What do you think? And this really gets to the sense of what is and what is not news, right? So now here's what you're going to do for each of these five. 
you're going to say, here's how I interpret it. I see this is what I see this being or not being an expression of speech or expression of press or expression of the First Amendment. And then what would you do? I would rule in this person or this person's case, right? In all of these, okay, again, there is a right answer, but it starts with your interpretation. So if you see something, for instance, uh, the case of the new dancing, you like, no, that is not that is not expressive free speech, that is pornography, then that's going to lead you down a specific path. But you have to be able to explain why you feel that way. All right. Um, you may work in groups. Uh, small groups would be fine. Uh, if you do that, though, please put everybody's name on the document so I know who was working with whom and who to give the credit to. Uh, I would like for you to try to finish this today during class and submit what you have. Uh, on Wednesday, when we get back together, we start up speeches again. Um, if you have any questions, uh, make sure you get with me when I get back on Wednesday. Good luck, everybody.